Welcome to Insight. Today we are chatting with Judy Vrettenberg, President and CEO of Girls Incorporated, a national services, education, and advocacy organization dedicated to inspiring all girls to be strong, smart, and bold. Judy has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Judy, for joining us today. You're welcome. So, Judy, why do girls have to be bold in today's world? Even though it's 2015, girls still are getting messages that are limiting, sometimes objectifying, and not giving them the opportunity to be the whole person that they could be. So, so the, the idea in 20, uh, 2015 that, that girls are encouraged to conform to some mold, to some step back in society is still prevalent today? Today, girls do have options. The world is opening up to them, but the pressures externally to conform to a certain notion of perfection, no human being can, uh, can achieve. And so this idea that a girl is still supposed to look a certain way, uh, conform to this external notion of beauty, and one way to be physically beautiful, but also achieve at the highest levels academically, uh, achieve in other aspects of their lives, is a notion that is, uh, uh, I believe, a setup for um, a very difficult situation. Let's make no mistake, this is not a matter of yet another group of people, another organization trying to imprint an identity on a girl. It's, it's basically saying to a girl, you can be who you wish to be. You, you can aspire to whatever role you wish to have in society, to whoever you are. We believe in th three prongs. We surround the girl with a person, a trained professional who becomes a mentor, a long-term relationship is formed with an older adult professional who comes from the community that the girl comes from. And she believes in her. We inculcate a deep philosophy of the strength of every person. And that mentor, along with the other girls in her group, usually 10, 12, 15 girls in a group, create a sense of sisterhood, of support. So the people are the starting point, a really supportive environment. But the second piece is that environment, an all-girl, safe place to be a girl, to deal with the emotional and psychological issues that girls face in a, and also a physically safe place. So where messages are sent around opportunity and um, frankly, rights and responsibilities. And the third piece is our fabulous research-based programming. We do have a phenomenal curriculum uh, that help girls develop economic literacy, age-appropriate curriculum. We divide girls into early elementary school, late elementary, middle school, and high school. But that curriculum that really provides the knowledge and the skills, and girls then learn, well, if I could master this, right. then I could master algebra, and I can see the connection between uh, studying algebra and my future goals that I aspire to. So the sense of sisterhood with high aspirations, shared drive to achieve is how we support girls to uh, unleash their potential. Complementary to the, to the mentoring work that you do, you have a number of other programs to also create recognition opportunities uh, to enable girls uh, to explore. We, the, the curriculum that I started to talk about is, um, really rooted in girls learning new things and, and opening new uh, uh, horizons, if you will. Now it's very um, much in the news that we have to change the pipeline of girls and underserved groups pursuing STEM fields. At Girls Inc., since the 80s, we have a programming called Operation SMART, which stands for Science, Math, and Applied Relevant Technology. And so girls from a very young age, all the way, five years old, all the way up to 18, are exposed to uh, the fun of math and science and exploration, discovery, that um, is helping girls resist those stereotypes that coding is not for you. In fact, 
coding can be for you. And we're really pleased that right now we have a fabulous partnership with Google. And last fall, 3,700 girls went through a coding experience for the first time and saw that coding can be an outlet for creativity, for helping others, um, and it is absolutely something that girls and very feminine girls uh, can aspire to become uh, coders, computer scientists, technologists, and those are just very fabulous careers uh, in terms of uh, interesting careers, but also providing economic independence for girls. And complementary to that, to the acquisition of skills and understanding that such a path is, is, is possible, and fulfilling is also the self-advocacy. Yes, yes. Um, developing a voice. When you meet a girl's ink girl, you know her. She has poise, she has confidence, she's comfortable to assert her rights. And we have something called the Girls Inc. Uh, girls' Bill of Rights, where girls understand that they have a right to be safe in the world. They have a right to economic independence. So understanding um, the, the signs of a healthy relationship versus an unhealthy relationship and how they can look out for themselves and their friends and families and give, also give back. We definitely inculcate the spirit of community service um, and, and paying it forward, if you will. There are other organizations beyond Google who have been instructed by your model and are helping you to advance your message. Could you cite a couple of more examples? Because there are some fascinating... Uh... Yes, we have many wonderful corporate partners and individual partners. A very um, relevant example is today, 17 Girls Inc. Girls here in New York City will meet with Oprah Winfrey. Uh, seven of those girls will be in a commercial that Starbucks, Tivana, Chai Tea will create with um, to promote Oprah Chai Tea to benefit youth education, and Girls Inc. is one of the beneficiaries of that promotion. Um, and it's just terrific that young girls will have a chance to meet with Oprah herself, to hear from her, to ask her questions, and to be inspired by her. And at the same time, we'll be able to get the message out throughout all the Starbucks stores about the importance of investing in youth and youth education, and particularly girls and their education and Girls Inc. One of the things that I think is so marvelous about Oprah as an example is mm -hmm. that she doesn't conform to, a, to any norm. She's created her own norm. Mm -hmm. There are women across the spectrum who are so obviously themselves, and those are the women who are your mentors in, in so many different ways, and they're raising girls who will be also women of, of substance. Yes, I think um, identification is so important. And so for young girls to see Oprah and to understand that she's carved out her own life and how she's done that in her unique way, gives you confidence that you can do that too uh, in your own path uh, um, to, uh, to move yourself to a better life. Uh, the girls and girls come from families and circumstances that are um, economically difficult. About two-thirds of the girls we work with come from families with incomes of $30,000 or less. Some have experienced homelessness. Each and every girl that you would meet has so much inside of her, uh, if only she could see a path forward. And that's what we provide for her. Um, create the environment where she can get to see who an Oprah is or who another woman is and then decide for herself, well, this part I don't really identify with, this other part I do, this is right for me. Let me, let me create my own unique experience and uh, achieve what's right for me. In terms of the scope of your uh, organization, talk a, a bit about uh, uh, the, the breadth of, of your work geographically, mm -hmm. um, the communities that you serve, uh, uh, your budget, uh, your staff, your volunteers. So Mark, Girls Inc. is throughout the United States and Canada. We have 82 full member organizations. We served 138,000 girls last year. So it's a chapter-based organization. Yes, it's very we're, much a, we're a, a local. grassroots, community-owned 
uh, organization. Each one of our organizations have local governing boards, and they we're a network mm -hmm. of affiliated uh, units, interdependent, supporting and helping each other, just kind of the same idea of sisterhood uh, that we inculcate in the girls. Um, at the same time, we do work at the policy level. So it's very sad, but the good news about um, violence against girls and women is that it's now we're dealing with it. The media is um, helping us understand the rampant problem. One in five girls is sexually abused before the age of 18. That's 20 percent. So if we have a crowd of a hundred girls, a hundred girls, a hundred women, 20 of those have experienced sexual violence, sexual harassment, sexual harassment, yes, sexual violence, and, and most of that will have been perpetrated by men. Yes. This is a serious problem that we're now starting to talk about, that we have this problem in the United States. We're not in denial. That's the first step of trying to solve the problem. So we work at the individual girl level to help her see the early warning signs, to extract herself from unhealthy relationships. And then if something does happen, she is abused, that she doesn't blame herself. At the same time, we work at the policy level, the systems level. We're working both with the White House Council uh, for Girls and Women, as well as with Congress on legislation to protect girls, uh, both at on the college campuses, but also um, we're working with some senators right now to provide some legislation for middle school and high school girl protection. Um, we've been always active around the Violence Against Women Act, which was reauthorized uh, a couple of years ago. And so um, many of us have to work together, must work together to change uh, the culture and change um, the reality that affects both girls and boys, women and men. And this is not a partisan issue. It's not a conservative versus liberal issue versus Tea Party versus libertarian <laughs> issue. It's, it doesn't matter if you're, if you're um, an illegal immigrant or a legal resident. It really comes down to being conscious that there's an issue. Yes, uh, well said, Mark. Um, uh, human, this is a very human subject. Every single person can relate to um, ab abusing another and um, uh, understanding that um, when you create equality, you have equality of opportunity. That is something we deeply believe in in our democracy in the United States. And so having um, abuse of power against an another person um, just because she happens to be a girl or a woman is just not acceptable behavior. You also, uh, in describing the, the organization, you also uh, set forth the, the logic of having a headquarters operation um, that, that binds together the various chapters, the various parts of the organization that are providing local services in terms of standards, sharing of knowledge, uh, in terms of um, uh, assuring that your policy work can be pursued so that each of the chapters individually and collectively has a voice when it comes to these types of, of uh, policies. Yes, uh, as a grassroots organization uh, informed by the girls and their families, we can advocate collectively on behalf of all girls and their families. That's the beauty of a system like Girls, Inc. Uh, we provide strategic leadership informed by our very close relationship with girls and deeply understanding their needs, their interests. We have so many advocates who care deeply about girls growing up strong, smart, and bold, the whole girl development, having a chance to achieve her full potential. Our advocates are m many men, women, of all ages, all, as you say, political parties, uh, perspectives. Uh, we can all band together around sexual violence, Absolutely. around body image uh, problems. 78% of girls are unhappy with their bodies. 
78 percent at various stages of their of their growing up are unhappy with their bodies that's because of all of these messages that tell girls there's just one way they're supposed to look and of course that's not human and not possible it's and so boring too one, it's so boring one size one race one uh, one ethnicity one set of beliefs i mean uh, uh, how boring is that? I mean, how, how often can you go to an ice cream parlor and have vanilla before mm. you want to try a little bit of chocolate or, mm. or a strawberry or whatever? Even if, you, if, if, if that's not necessarily your favorite flavor, you want to have a little bit of exposure and, and, and spice. The, it, it, it's well said. The um, way we can be stimulated by each other and have our minds open to opportunities our horizons expanded is being exposed to difference, diversity. Diversity is uh, something to be um, really embraced and celebrated. Um, that's what we believe deeply. And again, if you're going to be hard-nosed, if you're going to be hard-nosed, women are consumers. Women are business people. Women are contributors. Women create texture. And so by depriving us, uh, us of those gifts, uh, our society of those gifts, or by trying to restrict those gifts into already predefined furrows, you start to eliminate all these marvelous, marvelous aspects of, of, of America and of the world. You know, Warren Buffett famously said uh, when asked, well, what's the secret of your major success? He said, I wasn't competing with half of the population. And he's been a real champion for girls and women. Uh, Susie Buffett's a longtime supporter locally in Omaha as well as nationally. She's on our national board. Um, and so I think there are many uh, advocates from the Oprah Winfrey's to the girls themselves. And we have many men who are tremendous advocates for Girls Inc. We've been very fortunate that Tony Bucci, who chairs Mark USA, an advertising agency, arranged for Mark to do a completely pro bono campaign for us to get out the word of these big issues that girls are facing and how Girls Inc. can be part of that solution. So, Judy, you're citing some examples of also what we can all do. We can, we can mentor, we can financially support, we can volunteer. We can advocate. We can advocate. We can give messages to our daughters, our nieces, our sisters, that they can forge their own path, that they uh, don't have to be limited by external notions of what's possible. And we can evolve our own attitudes. We can work on ourselves. We, we, we should always remember that the solutions start with us. Yes, and uh, one of the mantras at Girls Inc. is collaboration for results. So we hold ourselves accountable at every level, and we do that in teamwork with others, both within the organization, within the entire network of Girls Inc., as well as with uh, partners like you. Thank you very much, Mark. <laughs> thank you, Judy, and thank you so much for sharing the story of Girls Inc., and thank you so much for your insight. You're welcome. A pleasure. Thanks. Thanks.